Hello and welcome to Health Talk. I'm Dr. Manny. A new study shows 11 million men were actively infected with oral HPV between 2011 and 2014. But what's worse is 7 million of those men had HPV strains that can cause cancer. Dr. Richard Bask, Assistant Professor of Radiation Oncology at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, joins me now to discuss this rising epidemic. And rising it is. Absolutely. And well, the cases are expected to increase. Oral cancer. All right, so let's talk about oral cancer uh, and HPV. What's the relationship? What's the science behind this? And is HPV is human papillovirus? Correct. Right. So for a while, a lot of head and neck cancers, like oral cancer, were caused by smoking, tobacco, alcohol. Um, however, in this new wave of the epidemic, it's actually driven by a virus called HPV. Who is at risk for getting this virus? So the truth is most of us have been exposed to the virus itself at some point in our lives. Right. Um, in some people, um, the virus sticks around for a while, um, and if left to do harm, could cause cancer many years later. So if, you know, because people, they don't understand sometimes. So if, if, if I get HPV, do, do I feel anything? Do I see anything? You would never uh, know. So, th so this is basically the virus is embedded in my system. Yeah. Somehow my immune system is fighting it, but I don't get any blisters, so I don't get any fever or aches and pains. It's not like the traditional virus that you think of, like the right. flu or right, the cold. Exactly. You know, you would never know that you had it. Now, why are we seeing a rise? in cancer. I mean, HPV has been around for a long time, right? It's not a new virus, right? Uh, but now we see a rise. And, you know, as I mentioned in the intro, the statistics are incredible. Why? So, you know, the, the study, to our surprise, showed how many men were actually infected with this virus. So this virus is the same virus that causes cervical cancer, um, which women get screamed for. Um, and now the virus is also being found in, you know, the oral cavity. Um, and it's been found uh, most often actually in men um, to a staggering degree, um, more so than women. So it's thought that this is a sexually transmitted disease um, and that oral sex may be the culprit, one of the culprits in transmission. Okay, let's get back now to uh, testing. Yeah. How would you screen or test for HPV or specifically oral HPV? So it's a great question. So unfortunately, right now, there are actually no screening tests for it. Um, so women obviously get screened for the cervix, but there's no surrogate uh, for the head and neck. You know, as part of this study, they had people spit into a cup, um, right. and they tested it. Yeah. Um, but that's not ready for prime time. That's not ready for screening. Um, and you know, you, you're not going to go to your doctor's office tomorrow and, and spit in a cup and get screened. Right. Um, so while the testing may be there, it's actually not part of a screening program. So, so let's look at dentists. Yeah. Should dentistry, should a, a, an oral examination of your, of your mouth and, and throat be part of a routine dental exam? Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it should. Um, right. You know, that's not to say that they should be screening for HPV, but I think, you know, most dentists will look for cancers in the oral cavity as part of their examination. Right now, until you get a lesion, if something's picked up early, then there's no way really of testing. Correct. Prevention. How do we prevent this? So the good news is there actually is a vaccine that's available, um, a Gardasil vaccine that covers nine strains of HPV um, that is currently out uh, uh, and offered to uh, uh, the pediatric population. Uh, can, the H can the Gardasil vaccine be given to uh, the adult population? So it can be. I mean, currently it's people under 15 that are mostly getting vaccinated. Right. Um, however, there are some people older that, that do fit a profile to get vaccinated. Um, but the truth is, once you become sexually active, you've likely been exposed to it at some point, and then the, ep you know, the question of is this vaccine efficacious comes into play. Right. All right, well, listen, I think that this is a very important topic. As I said, you know, throat cancer is on the rise, and... Hopefully, um, you know, you guys will come with, you know, at least for the screening part of it, uh, get something that, you know, we can test people and, and, and indeed um, um, sort of monitor. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having here. me. And if you have any health questions, tweet me at Dr. Manny on Fox. Until next time, I'm Dr. Manny.